Power cats are becoming really big business. And this is Aquila's largest. This is uh, actually hull number one. It's the Aquila 70. It's a really big boat. So much space on here. We'll give you the full tour of this one. Uh, we're going to go to every area and I'll show you what it's all about. But we're going to start back here with the tender handling equipment. This is quite interesting because what they've done with this is this whole center section here is basically like a slipway. It hinges right at the front. So the whole thing comes down into the water. So this lowers down under the water. It becomes a ramp. Obviously you move these two things out of the way hook your tender on and then it pulls the tender on there's um, those stainless steel chocks there go into either side so it's got something to sit on bring it all the way in hinge this back up or power it back up and your tender sits on there I think it's about a 14 foot tender if I remember rightly we'll head on this way and head on up and in you've got doors here so you can close off the cockpit area and that is just here very nice size the big news with this of course as is always the case with these boats is the beam which in this case is about 27 feet. It's a big, big yacht. Okay, let's head on in. Now I mentioned this is number one. There are gonna be a few changes on future boats. One of these is that this has got manual doors. It's gonna have push button pneumatic powered doors. Let's close that behind us. The other thing that's gonna change is there's a slight lip as you come in. That's gonna be recessed, so it'll be completely flush coming in. So that's a useful modification. Okay, first thing that we find is this very comfortable looking main deck area. You've got, as you can see, big lounge area here, TVs in there as well. The dining area is up ahead, and then this is a really lovely big galley area. And what's great is a lot of these are um, owner operated. Of course, you can have a crew and there is a, a crew space, which I will show you. But um, just for a family on their own. The ability to have all this as one big living space. You've got your little bar area here. You can cook here, chat to people here or here. It's just really, really social. Works very well indeed. If we head around here, a load of uh, fridge and freezer space, the wine cooler, the cappuccino machine, all of that kind of stuff is in here. So this is basically a bar area really. Um, but of course it's connected to the galley so it all becomes one thing. So if we have a look down through here, and you can see how that all connects right the way through. Some nice lighting in here as well. I've done a really nice job with all of this. You've got blinds drop down at the minute because it's a very hot day. Try and give the air conditioning a little bit of a break. Um, cooking here, of course, the oven is down underneath. Also things like, if we touch that. Is it that one or is it that one? <laughs> it's that one, there we go. Edit that out later. Uh, dishwasher is in there. So all your mod cons. Now, there is a raised pilot house up above us, which I'll show you, but you can, in fact, control the boat from here as well because they've put repeat throttles and joystick control, and I'm going to talk about that a bit further on. It's quite interesting what they've done with that. Also, the multifunction displays are here as well, so you can monitor everything from here, and you've got the view out. We've got um, blinds across the windows at the moment, so it's not quite as clear as it normally is. Obviously, those are just, again, to try and defeat the sun a little bit. This is this dining area, but isn't that a massive space and that's what these are all about okay let's head on down a bit further what we've got down here then is a massive owner's cabin right up here in the bow look at this that's a great size isn't it and of course because it's a catamaran you've got the holes on either side so it drops down if we go down this way first of all we've got drawers down here so it's like a dressing area really isn't it you've got a little dressing table area and massive wardrobes as you would expect AV equipment in here as well big bed and then if we step across and head down the other side this is nice as well this little area just to chill out in here this is the ensuite area so we've got the twin sinks if we head up here we'll find the loo If we head aft, we will find the shower. Really nice size shower. There we go. Rainfall and with the wand. Superb. So that is the owner's cabin. Looks great, doesn't it? Let's go and find some more. Now, there are different layout options on here. Um, one of the things to mention, there's extra fridge freezer capacity here as well. If we go around this side now, there's another door here, as you can see. It's open at the moment. If we drop down here, 
This is one of the guest cabins. This one has got a, uh, well, three cabins actually inside the boat, plus another large cabin that's accessed from outside. So four cabins in total. You can have a five cabin layout, and I'll explain that as we go on around. But all these cabins are a great size because these hulls are quite wide. Quite often with catamarans, you come down into these hulls and they're narrow, and the beds are sort of squashed in and up against the wall and everything else. Proper walk around bed in here, it's really lovely. You've got um, wardrobe facilities, of course, again, so that's in here like so, right the way across there. And then this one has its own ensuite. Very nice finish, actually. I love the way they've done all this. And then the shower back in there. So that's cabin two. We'll go and find cabin three. Okay, so we're gonna come around here. Hello there. Okay, let's press on back through here and then we'll find the entrance to the other cabin down here. All of these cabins are en suite, but what we find first of all, just close that one over a moment, is this really nice utility area. So what you've got here is a load of storage about the place, but you've also got then your washer and your dryer. Now I mentioned this has got three cabins uh, inside the interior plus a cabin that's accessed from outside. If you want the four cabins inside, this can be configured as a cabin instead. So of course you get the bulkhead that comes around here, around here, door in through here. We've got the day heads, that's in there. So this cabin would use that day heads and then this passageway would go past it and this would remain the same. So it depends how you're using the boat, how much storage you want, uh, how much sleeping capacity you need. But if you want that as another cabin, that can certainly be done. We'll head forward here. Another very generous cabin, again, with a lovely floor space all the way around the bed. We've got the blind up in this one as well, so you can see how well this works. When you're lying in bed, your view is straight out across the water. That's fantastic. Again, you've got hanging lockers in places like this. Storage dotted around the place as well. And again, of course, an ensuite to this one. And that's back here. All of these are really generously proportioned. It's fantastic, isn't it? There's no sense of compromise on here, as I was mentioning earlier. With a catamaran, quite often you come into the hulls and they're a bit narrow. Not on this. All of these rooms feel like proper bedrooms, not like cramped cabins. Okay, let's come back here. I'm going to show you the day heads, but also we've got engine access through here as well. There are twin engines on this one, of course one in each hull and these are pretty much identical so I'll show you this one and it'll give you the idea of how the other ones work. So sink in here, uh, toilet and shower, it's like a sort of wet room really isn't it? Okay so let's open that fella there and we will head back again really good size. What's interesting about this is that that tank there is a diesel tank but it's just like a, a day tank because the main tanks are under the floors down through the hull, so you get a lot of capacity for fuel, but it's all kept really low down, keeps the weight down, keeps the center of gravity down, and then they feed into this through a fuel polishing system, so you can clean the fuel as you go. The engines are Volvo Penta, they're D13, 1000 horsepower. They're giving it about 27 knots flat out and cruising there for 20 to 25, that sort of area. If you're doing about 24 knots, you've got about 450 miles of range, which is pretty impressive, but not as impressive as if you drop back down to displacement speeds, because if you do that, you get 3,000 miles plus. It's incredible. So really, seriously, long distance capability with this if you want to keep your speed right back, or the option of going fast if you want to. You've got a ladder here that goes up, that's straight out into the cockpit, so that's another route out of here. Generator is in here as well. One thing I want to mention, these are a conventional shaft drive, so you've got engines, gearboxes, and then the shaft you can see coming out the back, straight back down underneath. But the rudders, which are back aft, you can just see the top of the rudders there, or the rudder stock. They are, uh, there's two of them, one in each hull of course, but they're independently controlled by IPS style controllers. And what that means is that the rudders can point independently of each other. So you can have one rudder pointed that way and another rudder pointed that way. And you might think, well, why on earth would you want to do that? And it's normally you wouldn't. You normally would want them lined up um, 
perfectly, but when you're manoeuvring the boat, by being able to direct the thrust with the rudders in different directions and use the bow thruster as well, it gives you joystick control. And that's why when we go up to the um, go up to the bridge in a minute, you'll see that it's got a joystick controller on it, even though it's not got IPS. So there we go, generator is in here as well, and there's things like water maker in here, that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's quite a serious cruising machine, this one. Let's come back out of here. Close that one back up. And what we're going to do now is take a sharp turn around to the left and we'll find another stairway. And this takes us up to the, well, the bridge deck, really, or the upper deck. Now, this is one of the areas there's going to be quite a few modifications going forward because what they've done with this one is they've got the screens here like the sort of canvas screens if you like with the clear sections in that's going to be getting stainless steel doors across there you'll have a sliding door here that goes across there and then windows here stainless steel framed that window there will slide across so you can open it up and the same over here this one's just got the canopy sort of section that's going there'll be a stainless steel framed door here glass door of course and that'll open inwards like that but also then these sorts of areas which at the minute are bare grp they can be finished much nicer same around here it'll just raise the ambience of this level quite a bit what i think we'll do is we'll go aft first and then work our way forward so there's a really nice upper deck area here we can sit out with an amazing view out across the water some more changes here we've got the bar area over on this side there's going to be like a proper bar with sort of like a bar top and stools next to it and then this whole section will be changed and moved over onto this side so you can sit here looking out over the water that would be great this one's got the barbecue of course that's in here and we've got the sink and we've got ice maker and fridge like so so usual sorts of things so that's not going to go as such that's going to move and then it's going to get a, a, like a freestanding bar where you can get your knees under it and set up bar stools but that's a nice little zone out here this as well, it's an opening hatch here. This is a manual opening hatch. That's going to change to a push button. You'll just be able to power that up just at the touch of a button. There's TV here as well. And it's just reminded me that there's a TV in one of the cabins that drops from the ceiling like this. You press a button and down it comes. So if you wonder why there's no TVs in the cabin, that's why they're up in the headlining. Um, here, you've got a um, table that opens out for dining. So you can see that as that leaf there lifts up. And then you've got a very comprehensive upper helm just here. How cool is that? This is this joystick controller that I was saying configures uh, the engines, so in and out of gear, uh, throttle, uh, the bow thruster, and those rudders, those independently vectoring rudders. So by manipulating this, you push it sideways and it'll help to push the whole boat at an angle, that kind of thing. You can do an awful lot more than you can normally do with this sort of boat. It's all uh, glass cockpit across here. So these are three multifunction displays that do engine instrumentation, navigation, radar, all that kind of stuff, all displayed on there. Conventional throttle controls here, compass as you can see, and the big wheel. But quite a remarkable view because you're so high up. You've got these big wipers on here as well, as you can see. That is a very commanding helm position. They're going to be doing a solar pack as well. There's going to be uh, the option of solar, power, uh, solar panels, I should say, on here. Also more solar panels around the front. There's also going to be a hybrid drive option, so that's coming as well. Um, we've got a wing station here that folds away. So when you're docking the boat, that just drops in there. Um, you can look right down the side. That's very helpful. So this is like a Portuguese bridge that comes around the front of this upper deck. And what's great about this is you can walk around here and then straight access down. Again, you know, if you're an owner operator, the ability to go from the helm straight down onto the foredeck is fantastic, but it also just helps the flow around the boat generally. This is where they're gonna be adding solar panels all the way across here and up on the roof as well. So if you go for the solar pack, that's what you'll get. If we head down here, sunbathing cushions, And then we've got seating down here as well. Really nice area right up in the bow. Now, something to show you up here is these absolutely enormous lockers down here. They're so big that if you want to have those fitted out as crew cabins, you can do. They'll have a, a heads down there as well, and you can have one on either side. So there's one just there. 
and there's another one there. And in fact, that's just reminded me of something I meant to show you and didn't, which is under the saloon floor. There's massive storage in there as well. I'll show you that and the battery banks as well. Let's walk back down this side. It's a typical catamaran feature, these really wide decks. It's a very, very easy boat to move around. Let's come right back here and we'll head on around. I will just show you underneath the floor because it's quite spectacular what they've done underneath here. There we go, we just need to move these bar stools out of the way. Like so, and then we can lift this. Here we go, check this out. So you've got a load of storage down here the water tank is further forward and there's storage around that one as well, but also the lithium iron battery banks are down here as well. And you've also got inverters and all that kind of stuff. And then more toys about the place, so electric scooters, sea bobs, all that sort of thing can all live down there. That's a really useful area. Let's put that one back. There we go stools back and actually I do want to show you this TV it's in one of these cabins because it's quite neat so this cabin here we saw the TV that's on the wall like that if we go into this one it's a little bit more difficult because you've got windows here so normally when I lie in bed be able to look out the window however there is a button that you can push And if you want to watch TV, you can do. And what's quite neat about this is they've uh, configured it so it doesn't just come down to the vertical, it goes past the vertical. It does two things. Firstly, it gives you the correct viewing angle from the bed. There we go. Secondly, it makes it easy to walk down through here. Nifty, huh? Let's power that one back up. And the last thing then to show you, let's come back up here, is that fourth cabin that's accessed from outside. So we'll come back here. And then this little fella here, we can lift up. There we go. Now this can be used in different ways. You could use it as a crew cabin if you wanted to, but actually it is full uh, guest cabin standard and it does make a brilliant extra overflow cabin. This would be brilliant for teenagers, for example. They can have their own access in and out of here without coming through the saloon and disturbing everybody. So late at night, they can come back on board and they don't need to go inside the boat. Um, you've got a nice little desk area in here. Um, control systems for the boat are in here as well, so again, if it's a crew cabin, they can monitor all that kind of stuff. And some of the switch gear, battery switches, that sort of stuff is also down here. And then in here, you've got a very nice ensuite. So, uh, shower there, toilet on this side, sink, and that door there is into the engine space exactly the same as we saw on the other side. And that, my friends, I think, it's a pretty comprehensive tour of the new Aquila 70. It's a lovely, lovely boat, and it's going to be even lovelier when they carry out, well, they are carrying out these modifications already. As I say, this is the very first one. So all the boats coming through now would have the things that we spoke about. Let's drop that one back down. There we go, and I think we'll go and finish up on the bow. down in Fort Lauderdale at the moment. And there we go. All that remains is to say massive thanks to Marine Max. They're the dealers for these here and they organise this tour. And massive thanks, of course, to you guys for watching. We will catch you on another one of these real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.